go ahead. Proof of work doesn't work. Uh, proof of work doesn't work. Oh, it's Brian, been widely Brian, proof of oh, work's been working. Let me finish. Well, let proof finish. of work doesn't let work. Let finish, please. And in the early days of Bitcoin, there was a whole group of developers that broke off to create other assets, XRP being one of them, that doesn't use mining, that's cheaper from an energy perspective than Visa, and already scales to 1,500 transactions a second. A lot of these problems have already been solved. The challenge for adoption comes back to policy. The, the policy uncertainty around some of the assets has limited adoption, particularly here in the US. And I'm speaking from Ripple and XRP because we use that, that asset because it's a half a cent per payment. It's basically free. It's, uh, it scales and it's efficient. It's 1,500 transactions a second at, no inter at nearly no energy burn. So we're at a point today where there are real solutions to all of these challenges that already exist. Policies become the challenge. And we heard on the first panel that around uh, centralization on China, and this is going to be a hard pill for Peter to swallow, but 80% of the mining power for Bitcoin is controlled by six mining pools, five of which are in China. Today, the policy certainty in the U.S. exists for Bitcoin and Ethereum, despite the fact those are China-controlled platforms. So activity goes to those platforms. What we need to do from a, from a policy perspective in the U.S. is look at the places where there are uncertainty. And when we, one place, I'm speaking directly for me here, is XRP, where it looks like Bitcoin. It's decentralized. It's open source. We have a small, we have 7% of the validation power on that, rather small in there. Grouping or, or giving clarity to those ones that are, are very similar to Bitcoin and Ethereum that have the same characteristics and should be classified the same way. And then we're creating a level playing field across all the cryptos. I'm not anti-Bitcoin or anti-Ethereum by any means. I think there's a lot of great potential and breakthrough there. But we need to have a level playing field so the market can pick which ones they want to use and not be, to, as today they are, hindered by regulatory uncertainty. World orders are that uh, a group of countries across the world agree to a set of rules and they agreed to play by them. What underpins a world order is always the financial system. And what we're seeing in the world today, I think, is we are on the brink of a dramatic change where we are about to, and I'll say this boldly, we're about to abandon the traditional system of money and accounting and introduce a new one. Everyone's been predicting the demise of the dollar for a long mm -hmm. time. And the new one, the new accounting, is what we call blockchain. It means digital. It means having a almost perfect record of every single transaction that happens in the economy, which will give us far greater clarity over what's going on. It also raises huge dangers in terms of the balance of power between states and citizens. In my opinion, we're going to need a digital constitution of human rights if we're going to have digital money. Uh, but also, this new money will be sovereign in nature. Most people think that digital money is crypto and private. I find it very difficult to talk about the world order that we're coming into, given how very tenuous and unstable the current environment mm. is. In my lifetime, this is the second time that I have seen the superpowers actually threaten the possibility of mm. nuclear war. Well we, we wanted our customers to get best of the service turnaround times as part of NBAD's uh, commitment to the customer service. So what we have done is uh, we had our customers coming to us and asking us, saying how can we better these things in terms of turnaround time and how can we improve turnaround time. Today the payment takes anywhere from one day, two days, three days. So that's when we approached, we started looking at how to innovate our turnaround times for the customers and we started looking at uh, blockchain as a technology and Ripple as a vendor who can do it. And that's how the whole idea started. Yes, uh, the specific problem we focused on was initially we were looking at how to connect our branches. So we, have, we are present in so many countries, we have so many branches. So when a customer makes payment from our NBAD UAE account to say an example NBAD Oman, how can we solve that problem and how can we give them almost real-time payment back to the beneficiary and, and the end-to-end -end customer service levels increase and, and the customers are happy. So that was the business case we picked up looking at and our compliance and, and all the stakeholders were very comfortable looking at internal branches and connecting the internal branch and that's how we did, did our pilot. Building a business case should not be a big bang in my humble opinion. You have to look at uh, specific issues, specific problem, which all your stakeholders are very comfortable. 
they know what the issue is, they, they should know that it ends up in solving a customer problem, and they should know that it will benefit the organization as a whole. So there has to be a clear return on investment, there has to be an innovation coefficient, as we call it, and there has to be a commitment back to your customers. And you have to rope in your customers, and that's where NBAD has been working with our big corporates to bring in our corporates to see the end-to-end -end benefits they get by going live on this system. And uh, we're working closely with the vendors on how to improve the efficiency and overall costs, and, and uh, that's where the business case comes from. It's very important that all the stakeholders stand committed to this, and all the stakeholders understand why we're doing this. That's where the business case comes from. Um, we've seen initial results in terms of internally to the organization once we did the pilot. The, the team visualized how, what benefits they can get out of this if it is done properly. The, the internal stakeholders all visualize how important it is for, and how, what benefits they can get once we go to the clients and start explaining to them. But the real thing is in the dollars, real thing is in the customer turnaround time and service levels, which is yet to be proved. And I think, we, but in, in my view, I'm very uh, positive that this, this will show the benefits we have uh, initially thought about as part of our case. Our internal stakeholders have started visualizing the results and it has really come out quite well. Um, they, they see the benefits, uh, though as a pilot, uh, we can go back and actually once the scale grows up, once the real-time uh, system goes live, uh, I think internal stakeholders believe in this today, uh, that this can be bought in and overall client service can be achieved. But again, the, the real test is once we go live and once the customers see the benefits, whether we can uh, achieve this, this is yet to be proved, but I'm positive that uh, we will achieve whatever is the objective, we set it out as a part of our business case.